for a diligent and engaged student that I'm always talking to, um, you'll have noticed from the first section that there appears to be a few movements missing. So from our basic subgroup of basic movements. So we've got hacking down this way, chopping down, sitting. We've also got exactly the same posture. One, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, you get the picture. Um, then a few things start to occur to you. So it's quite commonplace now in, in martial arts, people talk about this idea of the, the figure, you know, there's the striking down this way, the striking up, striking to the side, and then there's the... And we very often see that as like, as if it's some kind of fundamental principle that applies to stick and then it applies to knife and so on. And I can tell you it's not that easy. So particularly with knife, you very often don't want to do that. You don't want to go um, exactly on 45 degrees. You're better off going across, more across the eyes to get more of an effect from the recoil. Um, we'll talk about that more in our, in our knife video, uh, which won't be publicly available. Um, goes across, goes across the eyes, so it's not quite the, the 45 degrees. And there's also things with the stick that don't fit in with this don't fit in with this um, whatever, clock face idea and one of those things and you'll notice that, that it's missing is the is the straight the straight hip this way and um, it's not that it's not there it's not that it's not there it's just really difficult to bring into this concept of supporting the arm with a heavy with a heavy weapon um, and also, one of the problems we have with it is that the wrist is on a funny angle when you hit him like this and you feel it when you, you hit something. It's a little bit of a funny angle, it's strong. The more you can angle it up to 45 degrees, the stronger the wrist is. So we're a little bit concerned about just from our usual, just from our usual, see how we root in from the back foot. One, if we do that, we do that this way the wrist is just at a little bit of a funny angle that the stick could just ping out of your hand so when we do this technique and it is there of course it's there it's part of each man's stick short stick when we do we change the routing and um, actually it's a very sophisticated version of, of the same route so we change and we move back this way and it just allows the wrist to be on a little bit more of an angle to bring the stick in flat and by being on a little bit more of an angle we eliminate any risk of this coming in and hitting the, the hand this way. One, two, and we lean back. Um, if you think like from this kind of hit, the routing is from the back foot, so we're pushing up from the back foot in effect. Uh, our contact point, there's a structure, physiological kinetic structure that goes right down to the point, the floor, and we hit them with the earth. When we do this, when we, when we change back, that's actually still rooted from the back foot, even though we're lifting up on the front foot and it looks like a, um, we're pushing up like a, a, a jab root. You'll feel it as you push back, push back from your front foot and push into the floor. You know, of course you're rooting from both feet is the reality. Push back and strike in this way and support the strike flat. Again, right-handed. Just strike in flat this way. And the root changes and you kind of going back a little bit, just kind of eagle claw movement. When we change to the other side, things are a little bit easier, but also a little bit more problematic. So from this, remember, this is our offside posture. From here, you can just slide in and hit straight flat like this. And the routing, the routing is a little bit diff different to the, to the cross where the body leans up. If you're doing it right, there should be this wave, this wave motion. Here it is very much this other way of releasing force, this... Um, it's not actually spiral force, but it's the way. You know, sometimes you can go this way, and sometimes you can go that way. Um, if you don't know that, there's different ways of, you can open, open, or you can close. Um, you can think about this very simply as like, uh, 
You can open the you can uh, open the qua or you can close the qua. Um, one, one, open, close. Just like in the old text where it talks about oh she was just opening and closing, lifting and love that idea. It's just up and down or open and close. But it's this very sophisticated idea, sophisticated idea of how we root. And this this way is closing. So the different parts of the qua coming closer together. I'm not saying that's exactly what it means, but this is one of the iterations of its meaning, one of the practical applications. So the qua closes, see these, my hips are actually coming closer together, whereas if I do that, they're, they're opening. It's a different way. And they're both perfectly legitimate. Someone could be coming in close and you want to change to this very open. That's something we're going to look at in another section. So we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. One, hip, hip flat this way. Again, this hand is snatching back, this hand is pushing out, it's releasing force, just like a, as if I was going to palm someone. Or as if I was going to elbow, and all this, all this technique really is, is the Yao Zichuan elbow, just applied to the stick. Again, it's part of the same structural genius, the same lineage of movements. Flat this way. The problem with this idea, as you can probably guess, is it can just bounce straight back into the face. There's no, it's so close range in many cases that um, it's okay if it's quite far out. You can maybe you can maybe pull it back. And if you do practice like I do, you know, hitting a tire or something like that, please beware the bounce back. Um, something most people have to learn the hard way. Sometimes learning a few teeth um, that the sticks will bounce back, particularly heavy sticks, and you hit them hard and they bounce back. And this is one of these where it'll just bounce back right into you. So you've got to start. If you are hitting the tire, you just start light, light, just get the feeling for it. Um, so this is a dangerous move to, to hit in flat this way. And there's some um, like useful variation of avoiding that is to think like you're just hitting in with the, the nearer part of the stick, very close range, maybe getting a little bit of an angle on it. See how my chin is now, because I'm, I'm so used to drilling this in. My chin is behind my shoulder like a boxer because it's going to come in like that if it does if it does bounce in yeah and just hitting it in trying to give a little bit of perception this way it's still really really dangerous and it's just like an emergency movement if you're prepared to take the risk in, in the moment um of all the possibilities for it are to do this take it on the the back of the the hand um trying to avoid the bone, so that's really going to hurt, but if someone's very close, you can push into their face, push into their face, release a bit of force this way. Um, otherwise, it's just a matter of taking the risk on the on the shot and whether it's worthwhile doing. If it's like very close and you're hitting something solid like a head, then it might be very likely to pin back. But if someone's holding out a stick like that, you know, um, it could be worth, could be worth the, you know, a pinging shot. It's not going to bounce back off a stick unless they're able to release force back and then you're a bit of a surprise. Um, you've accidentally challenged an each one master to a stick duel. Um, so it'd be worth it for that. It's useful for that technique. The other technique we're missing is the straight down. The skull cracker, the, the straight down shot. And you can see straight away the reason why we generally don't like it, even though it's a really good movement. It's a proper police baton movement. Um, is that the stick is, if you're going for the centre line and you go straight down, it's also usually pointing directly at your centre line. If you miss, you know, if you do it, someone is rushing in at you and you miss and then it's just going to get pushed in straight away and you're in a big wrestle over the stick, if not winded. That's why we generally don't like it. It's not like it's not there. So, um, there's different versions. You can do a very flat version like this where the stick is pointing down. Very flat. Crack right on the, the forehead rather than the, the top of the head. So it's just going right down the right down the centre line, but the stick is pointing. So if it gets it, it's just going to go back, go back that way. Now, our other way, as we learned before, is the big, the big skull cracker out this way. Um, 
it works great, but it's a bit of a funny grip. So when you practice it on heavy object like a tie, you can feel like it wants to ping out of your wrist. It's quite hard to hold on to. But it's definitely there, and you can definitely practice it in those ways. Otherwise, we're just better off. Why not just go for a different angle that's safer and easier to structurally control? Why not go for these versions of 45 degrees? So now we've got our one and our two and our three and our four and our five accounted for. So now we've got these going upwards this way and upwards flat. And how do we how do we account for those techniques? Um, this one is is not so bad. This one comes straight up this way. So from and to get power on this at the last minute, you've got to flick it with the. It depends where you start. If you start from a low posture, like this is another another guard posture that we use. You can get you can use the distance to get more power. But if it's from this high, this high posture, maybe a little bit less power. So it's rooted from the front foot. One, you're pushing up. Or this way. It's just a little, but it's but it's a really useful little. If you can imagine, like you know, someone's got a knife and you just flick it up this way, and it's on an angle. So if you think like a, we a weapon or an arm that's out straight, and you don't want to hit it. You don't want to hit it straight on. You want to hit it on an angle so you've got more chance of catching it. Just hitting it up at a, hitting it up at an angle. This way, and then from here, changing the other, the other techniques. Particularly these double handed techniques. So you can see that I'm just drawing together some of the stuff we did in the first, the first section. One, we just change. It's exactly the same as when we do one, two, and we come up, and then we just change into the one from the strike, snatch the bottom out of the stick, and then hit back down. It, it's more powerful than doing it this way because there's a bigger movement. There's a bigger circular movement on it. Again, that's another example, by the way, of the unity of square and circular because you can see all linear and circular. You see it sticks in a straight line, but the circle is where the power comes from. One, and then the circle in the body because I'm using, I'm using spiral rooting for it. One, then turn this way. One, spiral rooting, spiral rooting, strike down. One, strike down. If you're a really diligent observer, um, you're really engaging with this idea of doing all different kinds of little things in different postures to maximise power. And that changes from posture to posture. It's like, it's like your second coach, or injuries are your second coach, but it's like your third coach, because you're always trying to think, how can I get more power? And different postures, different techniques have different ways of doing that. So one of the things I'm doing there, as you can see, is I'm dragging backwards is to do with the, the root, the root is going backwards and it's what in the old days used to say sink your chi like whoosh, everything goes down, one I'm sinking and dragging backwards and that also is using just like my sheer weight my sheer weight in motion to add something to the to the force of the strike so one, dragging it back down like that to, to hit in that's a much more sophisticated technique and use of rooting and um, we'll have a think about it and we'll come back to that later our next question then is what about what about this going up this way and you something like you know you often see it in things like Kali and a screamer and um, particularly if you're using lighter sticks and you can do different things with lighter sticks and not putting it down by any means because um, you start getting whacked upside the head with them sticks it really hurts believe me um, but you can do certain things that you can't necessarily do with a with a heavier weapon and one of the things you feel if you do it with a big baton like this is that this strike, this strike upwards is really awkward for the wrist. It doesn't feel right. It feels like if you hit, you wouldn't be able to hold it and it would ping out of your hand. So it's a bit of a, 
bit of a movement to avoid on its own like like that do you sometimes see um unless you change and modify it so there's this technique where you come up this way and something you see you do see it a lot a lot in a screamer um there's a couple of dangers here one because you it's such a weak movement that you want to really you want to really dig in and swing up into it and what will happen if you do that very often is you'll swing and you'll catch your own leg that's why i really never do this movement it's um because you want to instinctively get the power and you catch your own leg but if you do do it and hit up this way there's almost no power in it so don't see that much point in it but conceivably there could be an emergency situation where that's the you know that's the right call maybe you just knock a weapon or something and then you can change into the um the big dragon taming fight ending strike um generally speaking the approach in each one stick is totally different so we don't do it single-handed at all it's as simple as that um so from this position one we want to change it to this strike we do double-handed just there's no reason unless your hand is injured in which case don't go for it anyway um there's no reason we want to interchange all the time between single and double handed in each one stick depending on the context um again it's one of the big differences between wushu and other short stick systems i mean all kinds of wushu short stick do this um, particularly the um, you know western chinese short wing staff stick they call it it's a little bit longer than this changing between single and double hand there's no reason why we can't do that it's perfectly legitimate technique so one change almost like a, a golf strike or something once we're in this double hand technique there's a whole range of double hand techniques that we're going to look at in, in another segment so again so one change to this technique one change one change notice that my hand doesn't come underneath for this technique so um if we were going if we were going this way and i was going to change the double handle my hand would go underneath so this way it just these kind of things yeah you drill them but they occur to you naturally as you're training it's part of the physiological genius of, of each one but it just occurs to you that it can't be um, it can't be underneath because it's too much of a twist this way it's got to be it's got to be on top this way so that you make this really strong structure and then you change into the into the next strike don't worry over time you just start picking all that up so my next question is where is, where is this where is this hitting upwards and it's a very it's a peculiar technique it's a it, um, it's something you use in limited limited situations just to flick up like that under the chin so is that just flick up under the chin distract into a into a change simple as that so from strike and using all the techniques that we've learned before by the way rather than using different techniques so you can follow along with what you've learned one low change hit up to the bottom of the sticks nowhere near we're nowhere near in danger of it unless something lands on us and hits in but then we're in a really good position to add extra force because of the position of the stick and we love these things we love these when there's a big swing that we can add extra force into the strike that to knock them out expect that to knock them out and this is our kind of three hits rule we want like boom 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 it's the last one we put all the power into it's the same as when we do a same as when we do a uh, empty hand kind of boxing combination most people boom 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 the last the last posture is the weakest in each one boom 
being the last posture is the one we set up the big structural force to try and knock them out. That's everything's going towards that move. It's exactly the same with the stick.